Kilian Journet recently quit his very long cooperation with Salomon to found his own running brand, Normal. In this video, we want to find out if the Normal shoes are really better than the Salomon shoes because Normal is going to come out this year with seven new models. So before you buy your next running shoes, you really want to know. Well, first of all, let's speak about which shoes we are going to compare with. I run in really many Salomons and there are just two models for the normal. So we will compare the Tomir model, that is this one here, as you've seen, I run already quite a bit in them, and with the Ultra Glide from uh, Salomon. Moreover, since the Tomir is actually a waterproof shoe, we will compare it uh, in terms of uh, water resistance with uh, this uh, um, shoe from uh, Salomon, the Super Cross, that is uh, with a, that has a Gore-Tex membrane. So is uh, the classic actually waterproof membrane that Salomon uses. All right. Now, first of all, let's compare the specs of uh, the Ultra Glide against the Tomir. In terms of type of shoes, they are actually both made for trail. But in terms of terrain, well, Ultra Glide says simply mixed, Tomir pretends that their shoes is really good for every type of terrain. Actually, not only trails, but also for pavement. The stack 32 26 mm for Ultra Glide, 31 23 for Tomir. So the drop is just 2 mm difference, 6 mm for the Ultra Glide, and 8 mm for the Tomir. In terms of midsole, we have mass cushion for both shoes and the lugs under the shoes are kind of similar. Ultra Glide 4mm, Tomir 5mm, but we have Conta Grip for Ultra Glide and Vibron Mega Grip for Tomir. The price is also fairly similar, 140 euros for the Ultra Glide, 150 for the new model and 160 for the Tomir but you have to add 10 euros if you want the waterproof model. So on paper, they are actually very similar. Now let's look at the water resistant membrane. We say for Salomon, we have the Gore-Tex and for Tomir, we have the Sympatex, which is a 100% environmentally friendly membrane that is declared to be 40,000 millimeters water resistant. So it resists to a column of water of 40,000 uh, millimeter, so 40 meters. While for the Gore-Tex, we don't have any indication about the water resistance and also no indication for both about breathability. I tried them both. I run on these in many rainy days and I cannot really remember having the feeling that uh, my sweat would not be able to go out of the shoes. My feet were really pretty dry. On the Tomir, I would say that uh, you feel the breathability, the limited breathability. So certainly the Salomon is more breathable, but you don't get any water inside the shoe either. So I would say that if you go for cold days, it doesn't matter. Above 10 degrees centigrade, um, this shoe under the rain on the long run is, not, is a no-go. So I would give a 7 out of 10 to this membrane and I would give a 9 out of 10 to the Gore-Tex that was chosen for this Salomon. There are many types of, uh, of Gore-Tex. What I would say to <laughs> Norma and to Kila Journée, if they would reduce the water column from 40,000 to 20,000 to make it more breathable, it would probably be a better shoe. And now let's go back to a comparison with uh, the Ultra Glide. This is a shoe that is really very, very similar. And let's see how they compare in terms of weight. The Tomir in my size is 310 grams. I have number 10 US or 44 Europe. For the Ultra Glide, I had to take half a number larger and it is 292 grams. If you would add 40 grams for the water resistant membrane, you would end up with 332. So you could say that actually the Tomir is maybe a tiny bit lighter than the Ultra Glide when you compare really the same type of shoe with the same type of membrane. So here I would give uh, a eight out of 10 to both 
because they are very, very similar. Next up is fit. How the shoe fits on your foot. So let's start from the very front, from the toe box. They are fairly large on both shoes. There is not really any difference in those. You have enough space, you won't feel any problems and any uh, pressure point in the front of the foot. If we look at now the heel cap, it is quite firm on the salmon, so the foot stays really firm in the back, but it's definitely better on the normal. It really it grabs my heel very firmly and it feels a little bit more stable actually than the Ultra Glide, that can be said. Concerning the upper, I have to start actually with the Salomon because you see that on the Salomon, this curvature here is fairly narrow here. You don't have a lot of width going from the back of the foot to the highest point of the shoe here. While on the normal, this curve is way wider and the shoe doesn't close too much here on the front. In, in fact, it took to me 200 kilometers to stop feeling a pressure point right here that was really disturbing. It took really a lot to break that. And also this is enhanced by these very thin laces from Salomon that are very convenient when you tied up your shoes very quickly, but uh, yeah, you pay for comfort. While in the case of normal, you have these uh, flat laces. They're very well done. I would say they're difficult to fit through. They come, the shoes come with two sets of laces. There is also for these shoes in blue. I don't suggest replacing them because it takes forever. But anyway, it's very, very comfortable. And despite the fact that the tongue is much thinner, actually, than the Salomon, it's more, um, it's kind of leather feeling. You can see that the Salomon is way thicker and softer. Well, I find that this is actually even more uh, comfortable. So very well done here in terms of uh, um, comfort of the, upper, of the upper shoe. Concerning the shape, Salomon is known because, especially in the past years, they tend to make shoes that are fairly narrow, especially in the front of the foot. No problem if you have a very slim Foot, but in any other case you have to go half at least half a number up in the past with this shoe I had to go a whole a whole number up actually while here they have enlarged a little bit the front so it's definitely less narrow than it was in the past you can compare these two and maybe they give you the feeling that this despite being longer is a little bit slimmer but nonetheless I had to go for half a number higher so here I would say that in terms of fit, I would give actually only a 6 out of 10 to Salomon and definitely an 8 out of 10 to Tomir. I actually had no problem in terms of fit from the very very first kilometer. It felt like I had already run in that shoe. Now let's speak about midsole and cushion. Let's start with the Salomon. The Salomon is a, uh, the Ultra Glide is a very soft uh, shoe. They say ultra cushion and that's the case. However, it starts feeling stiffer after 20, 25 kilometers. When you go for a very, very long run, it feels great at the start, but not at the end. Well, with the normal, it's not as soft. Yeah, you can really feel it. It's way harder. The midsole is way harder than the one from the Salomon. I can feel it under my finger but it's also a little bit wider. There is more material, despite the weight is actually pretty much the same. So with these shoes, you feel it a little bit harder at the beginning, but over the whole run, it doesn't matter how long, it remains very, very stable. I use this shoe for a three day fast packing, where I was wearing the shoe from sunrise to sunset, and I had very, very little pain in my feet. And I really run really the whole day. So here I would uh, say that uh, the Salomon get a seven out of 10, while for the normal, I would actually give 
an 8 out of 10 in terms of midsole and cushion. So let's speak now about outer sole and grip. And let's start with the Salomon. The Salomon has these 4 mm lugs that are fairly okay on uh, mixed terrain as long as it's not very wet and not too challenging. But as soon as it gets wet, you start slip on it. The normal is uh, definitely better. It holds way better on uh, wet and muddy terrain, including wet rocks. You can also run fairly easily on snow. All right, it doesn't keep you in balance on ice. In fact, actually, I fell on ice with this shoe, but on any other terrain, it does a great job. On, those, on that three-day fast packing, I had these shoes the whole time on and I didn't sleep a single time. I ran over 100 kilometers on terrain that were really impossible. It was also raining on those days and no problem with this shoe. So I will give a 9 out of 10 to the Tomir and I will give just a 7 out of 10 to the Salomon. You can go well on with the Salomon, but not if uh, you will run on a very wet and very muddy terrain. Durability is another important aspect when you buy a shoe, in particular the expensive one. Let's start looking at uh, the Salomon. I run, uh, I don't know, I think more than 300 kilometers. I will write the number up in the screen with this shoe. One lug here has completely disappeared. There is no more lug. And uh, it starts wearing quite a bit on the outer sole. It's where I tend to roll my foot. If I look at the normal, I run a little bit less kilometers on these normal shoes, but definitely on way more challenging terrains. And uh, all in all, uh, is doing a tiny bit better, I would say. The lugs don't look as well as on the other. However, uh, and I can show this better to you on this other shoe, here the very tip of the outer sole is detaching from the shoe. And this already happened during that three-day trip. First on this shoe, so I thought maybe I'm just uh, bad luck. But then after a few runs, it's also starting on this other shoe. So this is definitely a design issue. In fact, on the Salomon, that lips here is uh, a little bit thinner, so probably more flexible. Also the material might be more flexible and is actually holding way better. So I hope that normal realize that and it's gonna change that in the next shoes. Otherwise, this will continue happening. Given that, yeah, I would give a seven out of 10 to both shoes because uh, on one side we have a better grip actually and a better uh, durability of the lugs, I would say on the normal, but the Salomon have uh, uh, a better design and you can tell that the Salomon is a company that has been there for longer. All right, now let's look at the final uh, score of the two. And if you do all the math and you exclude actually the water resistant aspect that we have seen before, here is what you get with. We have uh, a 7.0 for the Ultra Glide of Salomon and an 8.0 for the Tomir. Of normal so quite a big difference so here my suggestion to you if you're searching for a cushion shoe to go out on the trail but not on too extreme terrain and you are familiar with Salomon you know that fit they fit well your foot then go for the ultra glide it's a little bit cheaper and overall is a, a bit more reliable shoes due to the experience that they have in their design. However, if you need a shoe also for very harsh weather, today is nasty weather here and I have to go out for a run, so I'll probably take actually the normal because that shoes really keep you safe also on extreme terrain. Now, if you like to run on rainy days, also when it's warm, then please don't go with the membrane of normal. It will be painful and your feet will be wet anyway. If uh, you go for warm days, rainy days, then take a Salomon because that Gore-Tex membrane just works better. If uh, you actually don't plan going out on rainy days in summer, 
or let's say late spring, then you can go along well with the normal as I'm actually doing. I hope you have enjoyed this comparison. If you had the possibility to drive both shoes, please add the comments in the description below because this is my experience after having run into several Salomon shoes and having tried this one model from normal. But our feet are different, our needs are different and your comments matter for all the viewers. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you at the next one.